Well, praise the Lord, here we are again coming to you via social media. Glory to God. And so, guess what? We have one more Sunday, one more week before we are together again. So we are all anxiously waiting, right? Uh, we've gotten together with some of you and uh, so far, uh, and uh, personally, or in person. And so it's been a lot of fun. We've had a blast. Uh, and so thank God for those times. So on the 20th, again, the Children's Christmas program is going to be a great time. They're having a, a crazy fun time practicing. And so just be sure to invite everyone you know. We are going to continue to keep our, our personal distance. And if you want to wear a mask, feel free to do so. If you can't wear a mask or you don't want to deal with the illnesses that come or the repercussion that come as a result, we understand. So just feel free, feel comfortable. And uh, we are not going to have every other uh, uh, row uh, like we had been. We're going to open the entire sanctuary. But you keep your own personal distance. You are responsible to do your part as you please, as you feel is right. And make sure that those around you are comfortable about that, with that. And so listen, whatever you do, I trust you. You are an amazing church family, and I just trust you. I trust my family to do what they got to do. We trust each other. We don't have to police one another. So I just trust you. How about that? And so let's go with that. Glory to God. And I mean that. I do. I do trust you in what you're going to do uh, right. So, uh, and uh, if you bring a guest, make sure that they understand that. And uh, if they're okay with it, that'll be a great time. That'll be really good. Well, let's go over to 2 uh, Corinthians against chapter 5. We're going to finish the message that we started last week. And so one thing as you're looking for first Corinth or 2 Corinthians verse 5, um, uh, or chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to read verse 7. Uh, I want you to pray, I want you to pray, really, and bombard heaven with, the, with, with, a, with prayer, uh, interceding for our nation, interceding for our state, and our, governor, our government officials, and that, that this entire, um, well, they're, they're still, they're considering... Uh, more shutdowns, they're considering uh, longer mask wearing, they're considering basically, I don't know if I should say this, but they're basically what this will do is it'll linger the COVID uh, situation a lot longer. So this thing has to leave our country, so let's, it's, I believe it's time to begin to pray that God will kill this thing and get it out of its way. I, if, I, if I know that the times and the seasons of God, I believe that though He did not bring it, as I've said before, yet He has used COVID to actually purify uh, the church as well as to bring some, uh, clean some things up in the world. So both the church and the world, the Lord has been working with, and so there's too much going on. There's a lot. There's a list. We can have a long list of the things that God has been working behind the scenes that we see, that we know that He's revealed in other areas, not to mention the ones that we don't know about. So thank God that we are on the winning side, and we know that not only God is in control, but we also have the authority over this COVID. We have authority over all the works of the devil. Come on, somebody. You can just shout a little amen in your living room or in your bedroom or wherever you are. And so let's believe God for a breakthrough in this thing or with this COVID thing. Amen. All right. So 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. Our lifestyle is to be a lifestyle of faith, of trusting God, of believing God, right? Or can we use another word, our, our, for we walk by risk, not by just taking everything carefully. I'm not saying that we need to be crazy and taking steps of, uh, uh, well, steps of faith or risky steps that are going to create all kinds of chaos. We know to use discretion, God's wisdom, and all of that. I think we understand that. So we walk by faith, not by what we feel, not by just our experiences, right? Not just by our head knowledge. We need to walk by faith, not by sight. So we mentioned last week that our perception influences our perspective. Just giving you a little bit of a background so we can kind of go back to where we left off. And our perspective drives us to a decision, and decisions gives us results. 
But in order to get results, or the right results, we must be in the right place at the right time, or have the right perspective. Be as a result of being in the right place and at the right time, in order to have, get this, the proper perception. It's easy to perceive things when we are not paying attention or actually having our spiritual radars on. Right? And so as the Lord wants to reveal things to us, sometimes we see things more in the natural or perceive things in the natural, not in the spiritual. So from heaven's perspective and from a biblical perspective, how do you see your life? You remember the question, how do you see? We're still in developing a spiritual eyesight, or how do you see your life? We mentioned about my uncles, that everything that he, they, they did or they said, if it was cool, if it was just something they wanted you to consider, or said they, wanted, they thought it was all right, or they were asking a question, they would say, how do you see? How do you see? So, how do you see? Different things in your life, different things in our community, different things in our country, different things in our world. How do you see it? Do you see it from the biblical perspective or do you see it from the media's perspective? Do you see it from, from the biblical lens or do you see it from man's lens? So we're all influenced by the world so much that we actually need to have a biblical worldview so that we can understand how God sees things so we can see it and, 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 and develop our thoughts and our conclusions based on what God sees, not just the one man sees. So we walk by faith knowing of what God has already said, but we still consider man's position and perhaps man's ignorance or lack of knowledge or lack of understanding of obviously biblical principles and so we have to work with that don't have to just work against it like a like a bully right but at the same time we got to work persistently and do what God wants us to do instead of what man wants us to do so last week we talked about ways to work our spiritual eyesight development or how to develop our spiritual eyesight. First of all, we said that we must learn, number one, it was we've got to learn the art of living by faith. Learning the art, or learn the art of living by faith. The deciding factor in walking by faith is in deciding and choosing to trust God 100% with your life. So when we give God His place, when we choose to walk by faith and not by our experiences and your head knowledge, then all of a sudden, heaven opens up and you begin to see not just the limitations, but you begin to see the potential of God's power that is available to you. We talked about a few things or a few how do you see areas in our lives. Which were, for example, how do you see your spiritual walk? How do you see your calling? How do you see your marriage, your family? How do you see your relationship with others, your career, your mistakes, your failures? Right? How do you see your plans? How do you see your prayer life? And how do you see over your overall relationship with God? And we can go on and on with more. We know that in the natural, faith is crazy. It doesn't make sense. In the spirit world, though, faith is very normal. Faith, in fact, is everything. I said before, faith is the currency of heaven. Without faith, we can't please God. Without faith, we can't receive anything from God. Without faith, we can't move forward in God. Without faith, we can't accomplish God's purpose in our lives. Without faith, nothing like that is going to work. And so we need faith. We need to trust God. So it is important to learn the art of living by faith. Secondly, the next way to work in the spiritual, uh, the spiritual eyesight uh, development that we are um, in our quest of in, it is number two, get in the Word. Get in the Word. This is simple and we already know this, but I want to I take some things a little bit deeper if I would, if I may. Get in the Word. Read it. Study it devour it and rely on it read it study it devour it and then rely on it really you have to rely on the Word of God why would you say you know, we have to do all this stuff is simply because your worldly input 
will drown your heavenly understanding every time because sin has a way and the things that are against God and the systems of this world will have a the, have the potential to begin to uh, fog our brains if you will or even our hearts our perspective begins to change. Our perception eventually is gone the more we look at the things that the world has to offer. And we, we receive worldly input every day, oftentimes hours on end during the day. And so it is important to get, to get in the Word and really devour it and know it, understand it, right? The information along with the revelation that you've received from God needs to be nourished and daily fed for spiritual increase and for spiritual preparation and development for your next victory. So we need to nourish the revelation we've received from God. We need to, we need to uh, uh, really uh, uh, enhance that which we have received from God so that we can understand it better, so that we can apply it better with God, God's wisdom. There's much we can say about that. But getting in the Word, let me give you some practical things here. What happens when getting in the Word? Getting in the Word, you'll learn to know about God. <laughs> you'll learn to know about God. But secondly, you also get to know God. I don't just want to get to know about God, but I want to get to know Him. In other words, I don't want to have just information. I want to have revelation. I, want to, I don't just want to have some knowledge. I want to have an encounter. I want to have an experience. I want to know what makes Him tick, if you will. I want to know what makes God, brings God pleasure. What, what not only just by my actions... But by the condition of my heart, by my thoughts, I want to know God. What is it that makes him uh, want to, you know, send Jesus on the cross? And we can easily say, well, it's because of love. But what does that look like? I love my kids and I love humanity. But it's not gonna, it's, I'm not going to go off and just send my kids and get them sacrificed for my, those that don't like me even to begin with. Let alone those that hate me. So there is a deeper love, there is a deeper uh, uh, awesomeness of God that I want to know about. You'll also get to understand yourself and mankind a little better by getting in the Word. The Word will bring understanding to who you are. You'll get to know yourself more as you see yourself as the, the scriptures become a mirror, so to speak. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and the good looking too. I mean, you, you see it all. <laughs> in the word because God has a way of pin uh, the word has a way of pinpointing the blemishes on my face as I look in the mirror but the word also have has a way of encouraging my spiritual eyesight my spiritual uh, uh, hearing and my perception my, and, my, and, my, and, and the gifts of the, all that stuff that goes on in, in my spirit has a way to actually lift it up and encourage it and, and, and recharge it if you will with the word You'll also develop a greater faith and greater trust in God. Our experience helps our faith. When I take a step of faith and I see results, that encourages and enhances my faith. But the Word of God, it's actually what brings substance, increases the root or, or nourishes the root system. And it begins to give me the ability to produce fruit from the faith that I've been able to exercise the Word. Next, you'll have better clarity. Better clarity. It's kind of hard sometimes to make a decision when your heart is kind of foggy, when you're confused and you're not sure if it's yes or nay, or yay or nay, right? You'll also understand the foundation in which you stand, Christ Jesus. You'll also understand how to operate and live a kingdom lifestyle. This is huge. That alone covers most of this message. That statement alone. Understand how to operate the kingdom lifestyle. And lastly, you know, we can have more of this on the, on the word, but you'll know his will. You'll know God's will. Because God's word is God's will. His will is His word. 
So whatever the word says is God's will, period. Now his will is not in all the totality of his will. It's not in the word. For example, by that I mean the word didn't say to me specifically that I needed to find Deborah Raylene Martin at the time when I was looking for a wife. I had to, it wasn't there. Uh, Deborah is in the Bible, but that was a whole different person. She's been there a long time. So I had to look for my Deborah, right? I didn't know she was, I didn't know where she was. I happened to bump into her because God was leading our steps. And so that part of my will for my, or God's will for my life is not in scripture. However, the principles of it, the guidance, the direction, the substance that I needed to make the right decisions, to enhance the gift of discernment, to know that that was the woman God had for me. And that I was, you know, the, 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 the king that was, he had for her. <laughs> right. And so, you know, that it gave, it gave us what we needed to establish then a marriage, right? So know the word and you'll know the author. Know the word and you'll know the author. Next, the third way that we can develop this spiritual eyesight is establish accountability. Probably one of the hardest things for us Americans to do. Establish accountability. It's very difficult for many people to do. You may be, it may be easy for you, but I can tell you that for most people, it's difficult to do because accountability will have to, uh, you have to uh, sort of um, kind of drop things down, uh, uh, just kind of come down a notch and be a little vulnerable with, with the person that you're going to choose to be accountable to. And so they're going to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly in you. They're going to find out, you know, some things you're going to open up. You're going to ask for help. You're going to ask for, for to keep you accountable on some things. You know, James 5, 6, James 5, 6, you don't have to turn there, but if you're taking notes, you can write this down. James 5, 6, I'm sorry, 16, 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So, you know, this can, this can take uh, a different outlook, if you will. We can have a service once a month <laughs> where I can invite you to the platform so you can confess all your, the sins that you committed that month so that you can be healed. <laughs> we know that that's not the way it works. But when I, when I confess some of my shortcomings to my wife or to a friend, things begin to change because they begin to pray for me about these things. And they stay to keep me accountable. They would ask me questions, right? Like, how's it going? How's it going in that area? Are you succeeding? Have you overcome it? Is there any other problems? Things like that. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Accountability. <clears throat> this is beyond just friendship. This is beyond just an acquaintance. This is beyond, you know, coming to church and saying, hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Glory to God. It's good to see you. Give you a hug, handshake, and all this kind of stuff. And talk about the kids or talk about what's happening at work or talk about the Browns or, well, that's a, not a, a good conversation. Well, these days it's not so bad. But then at the same time, you talk about politics. You talk about the governor. You talk about elections and all that stuff. And by the time you leave church, you leave the press. <clears throat> Because we start talking about all the problems that are going on around us. And so, accountability is a different story. Accountability goes a long way. There are, these, are, these are people that, that are or will become your trustworthy partner in life. In the journey of life. They're not moving in with you. Don't worry about that. This is someone who will pray with you, ask you some hard questions. Who will, who will help you make decisions in life. These are people that will get to know you, or you would get to know them. And they'll get to know what you want in life, out of life, what makes you tick, things of that nature. So it's important to choose the right person for this position. Not everyone qualifies for this position. We understand that. But accountability helps you become stronger, more secure in your decision making. It helps in staying committed to your vision and your goals. Accountability is a journey that needs nourishment. <clears throat> there was a friend of mine that asked me years ago to keep him accountable with his marriage. So I had to ask him the hard questions as to who, who did you talk to? Who have you been talking to? Who you've been counseling with? You know, what's been going on? What are you watching? How's your internet activity? 
things of that nature. <clears throat> later, a couple years later, he encountered some difficulties unrelated to his marriage. But his marriage started to be affected because he was personally being affected, dealing with anger issues and things like that. <clears throat> sort of became distant to his wife. They talked and he was struggling in a couple of areas and it wasn't horrible or anything like that, but it was just some things that were affecting his overall lifestyle. So he called me to his living room, I went, we talked about it, prayed about it, asked him some questions and that was the end of that. It was that quick and God, God blessed him and gave him a breakthrough and so thank God he's doing great. So accountability helps. You know, <clears throat> in Jan I've had accountability partners off and on throughout, you know, for the last several years. And in January, I'm starting a new partnership with a, uh, 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 um, a friend, uh, another pastor friend, that um, we decided to, uh, to establish this because we both are of the same mind, the same heart towards, you know, Ohio for Jesus, the same heart towards ministry, the same heart towards people. And so we have the same type of uh, desire to see God move through our ministries and so we want to go deeper with God we want to go deeper in the things of God so we're going to be challenging one another encouraging one another praying with and for one another so you know these are things that are important even to us pastors so I am due I'm starting that come January so at the beginning of the year that's what we're going to do so uh, this this accountability partner is someone that can actually keep you on track or someone that may be able to push you harder. You know, lest we become, you know, you, the, the accountability can help you move forward overcoming, for example, stagnation or even laziness. It's easy to do at different times in our lives, right? So, for example, you can have accountability partners if you're a grown-up or you're a teenager. It doesn't really matter at that point. You can have your parents. You're, 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 when you're a kid, you're, 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 you got no choice. Your parents are, you're accountable to your parents, right? And so once you become a teenager, you want to separate from that. You want to, you're 18 years old, you're 20 years old, and you don't want to be accountable to mom and dad because that makes you feel like a little kid and all that kind of baloney stuff. Well, you know, the fact is that if the parent is good, if the parent is strong, if the parent is a believer, if the parent can take you to the next level and help you walk through this journey, making some decisions, talk to your parents. Or maybe here's another one, how about some friends? We kind of touch on that. Maybe somebody at work that's a believer, but somebody that can pour into you, not somebody that will take away from you. You don't want a joy sucker in your life. <laughs> you want someone that by the time you're done, you are rebuilt or recharged, not rebuilt, but recharged. You know that you left with something. And that person, and you may be, and it may be a mutual accountability partner that you both, it's like ironing, sharpening iron, like iron, sharpening iron, right? So that's important. The fourth way that we can develop our spiritual eyesight. See, this is all in preparation for what's coming in 2021. I hope you understand that you're keeping that in the back of your mind. Number four is develop an uncompromising lifestyle of prayer. Listen, I didn't say develop an uncompromising prayer life. Though that could be said that way. But a lifestyle of prayer. A prayer life can be looked upon as, well, I pray once every day. A lifestyle... It's one that prays all the time, as often as possible. Understanding that that is my lifestyle. It's my lifeline, if you will. 1 Corinthians, or 1 Chronicles 16.11. 1 Chronicles 16.11 says this. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence, or seek His face. And here's a word that it finishes it with. Continually. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Jeremiah 29, 12, it says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. The Word will give you a road map. The Word of God will give you a road map, and prayer will show you the way. And the Spirit of God in prayer will often reveal to you the truth about the way. 
Sometimes we need revelation. We need a little understanding. We need some insight. There may be bumps on the road. There may be construction. There may be a car on the side of the road. As we're driving, as we pull the GPS, so the GPS is leading us, and all of a sudden, sometimes you have to use your own discretion and your own judgment because the GPS doesn't tell you everything about the road map. Right? Next, pray from your heart, not from your head. I mean, not to say don't use your head when you pray, of course. <laughs> but don't just pray a prayer that you've recited. Let your heart be filled with God. And let your heart just lead you in that prayer. Just the other day, I was, I was here, I came into the sanctuary, and I began to seek the Lord. And, and as I walked in it, it wasn't 30 seconds. And the Lord just came upon me, and my heart was filled uh, to pray for a friend of mine. Well, we just become friends recently. A great man, a great man of God that I've, I've grown to admire and respect. And so the Lord just came upon me and I began to weep for this man in intercession as the Lord was moving and I began to pray for different things in his life. Then I share that with him that night, as a matter of fact. That wasn't my head knowledge. I was praying about things I didn't know anything about. After talking with him, it was revealed that those prayers were very much needed. So I thank God that I was just willing to just let the Lord pray through me as I pray for him and the Spirit and things like that. So pray from your heart. What is your heart feeling? What is your heart, your heart's desire for God, towards God and the, the things of God? Next, pray by faith, not by chance. In other words, when you pray, believe that it is done, not hope that it is done. Not like, we'll see what happens. No, you know it's going to happen. Just expect it, because Jesus promised. Now, it's all in His time and according to His will. All that has to be in the right perspective and in the right place. But at the same time, don't just pray hoping that it will happen, that hoping that the Lord will answer your prayer. You know He heard, he heard your prayer anyways. He even heard your prayer before you prayed it. <laughs> he hurt your thoughts about it. He hurt you thinking about it. You know how it is that sometimes you, you plan a few minutes before you go to prayer. You're already planning what you're going to talk to God about. He already heard that. You know how I know? Because he's told me so. Not only does his word reveal that, but he's told me so. I'm about to start sometimes in prayer. This has happened to me a few times. And I'm ready to go in and just pray and bring to God this situation. And he said, yeah, you already talked to me about it. And I said, I... I've never talked to you about this. He's like, no, you did. I hurt you when you were planning, talking to me about it. I hurt your thoughts. It's like, okay. <laughs> next, let's go move on to the next subject. Well, thank you, Lord. Is there anything else I need to ask you about? No? Okay, then we move on. So pray by faith. Pray in faith, not by chance. And pray without doubting. The Bible says that a man that doubts is like the wave of the oceans. It just comes back and forth and it just is, is totally unstable in his own ways. So don't, don't doubt God. Don't doubt that he hurt your prayers. Don't doubt. Don't even worry about it. Don't even give it a second thought. If it comes to your mind, just rebuke that thought. Believe that God hurt you because that really settles the deal. He hurt you and that's that. Just believe it's going to happen. And just expect it. Pray intentionally and expect God for what He promised. Don't just hope that you're praying the right stuff. Just be intentional in your prayers. I asked you earlier, pray against the, the COVID. Pray against masks. Pray against the stuff they're trying to pass to get us to shut down again. Uh, and, and, and to bring this crazy vaccination that they say is not even going to get rid of COVID. They want you to get vaccinated and wear a mask on top of it. Then what's the point of wearing a mask? I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, we can philosophize this until we're, we're dead and we're not going to win anything amongst ourselves, right? So we got to pray that God will, will pour common sense into our leadership so they can make the right decisions and quit making decisions based on somebody else's pocketbook. Well, anyways, that's a different story. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off on something like that. But, hey, the truth sometimes comes out. So how do you see? Let me ask you that question one more time. How do you see? Developing your spiritual eyesight takes time. It takes effort. And it takes determination. 
We've got to be determined. We've got to be not only convinced, but determined on what we want God, what we believe God wants, and walk in that, and be intentional, and take time, and make forth the effort to accomplish the mandate of heaven. And your ROI, or your return, on the investment that you've put into that is amazing. The results that you get are amazing. And you don't do all this to get the results you want. You're doing all this so that heaven can come down and do what heaven wants to do in the first place. It's not just about me, you know, I don't know, getting more stuff. It's not just about me being healed. It's about all of us being healed. It's about God healing people everywhere. It's about, it's about, it's about taking my miracle and share with someone else at a cash, at a, with a cashier, uh, you know, share with the mechanic, share with someone else and, and see God move in their lives. That's what it's about. It's not about me, it's about others. That's what Jesus was about. You see, you'll see, see, when we, when we do this, what you'll see is you'll see what others won't. Your spiritual eyesight will begin to see what others can't. You'll begin to understand what others are not able to understand. And you will, you will walk with God like most people don't. The end result is you'll execute the kingdom mandate that God has placed in our lives in ways that we never even imagined before. Because God would take you to a higher level in Him, if you will. And have you walk in His path and in His ways, where you, even coming up this next year, you will be a different person, fully charged with the kingdom of God on your behalf, working with you, working for you, as you work in sync with God, knowing His will, developing the art of living by faith, as you develop a daily habit of getting in the Word, and as you establish your accountability, because it is important, and develop an uncompromising lifestyle of prayer. And I would assure you that 2021 for you will be a lot better and much different than 2020 ever has ever been. Amen? You believe that? If you believe that, just say amen and receive it and let's put it into practice together as the body of Christ. So let's take a, a few moments and pray. Father, thank you. Lord God, for your promises. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your kingdom assignment. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to execute your mandates. Lord, as we develop, Lord, a lifestyle of prayer, totally uncompromising. Lord, walking by faith and not by sight. Lord, we pray, bring about the right people to be accountable with, Lord. Whether it's one person or two or three, Lord, and help us develop that daily habit of getting in your word, Lord God, and, and, and developing this art of living by faith. Not by chance, not by our understanding, not by our experiences, but by faith in what you've already promised. We thank you, God, and I pray, may every person listening to me this day, God would be so blessed that they would have to figure out what to do with their blessings and begin to share it with others. In Jesus' name, as they glorify your name, Lord. We praise you and thank you. And if you agree with me, say a big amen and amen. We will see you harvest time next week. And the rest of you that don't attend the harvest time will see you on social media. Amen. God bless you.